So hello everyone and welcome into this video in which we are going to touch upon the Journey Opus 299 as you know that's the famous bundle of etudes Journey wrote around 1835, 1839 I even believe uh, the Schule der Gelaufigkeit School of Velocity and that bundle of etudes was of course very influential throughout the 19th and 20th century and we are going to connect, connect that with a recording made by Vivian Harvey Slater who was a fourth generation journey student. She studied with a gentleman called Eisenberger at the Cincinnati Conservatory in the US. And Eisenberger was a student of Lisitsky. And Lisitsky was a student of journey. So Vivian Harvey Slater was born in 1917 and she died at age 93 in 2011. Now, to be honest, I had never heard of her name She's a wonderful pianist, so happy to have discovered her, but her recording of the Opus 299, she devoted a lot of her time as a pianist in promoting the work of Czerny, which, if you see the chain of her uh, history and teachers, it shouldn't surprise us, and she made some beautiful recordings, but her recording of the Opus 299 is often shared on my uh, YouTube channel in the comment section as a kind of proof that the tempo indications that Czerny left for these etudes are actually very well possible to play in single beat. So if you're new to the discussion on tempo, the research on tempo, uh, and why we're talking on single beat and whole beat and the metronome, etc., there is actually a video that I made that can introduce you in that and just um, uh, will put you on speed with what we're talking about. You can reach that video by clicking on the i icon, the info card here, or just click on the link in the description box. So. First, I have to say, Vivian Harvey Slater's work as a pianist is brilliant. She is a magnificent pianist. And so before we are going to discuss even also the context of the Opus 299, I, would give, uh, I will give you some excerpts of her playing here. So if you listen to her recording of the Opus 299, it should not surprise any of us that people are actually pointing towards this recording as, quote-unquote, the proof that the tempo indications Chinese left or actually indicated as the, the, the tempo indications for these etudes that they actually should be reachable in single beat. Now, what people oftentimes not do is really check the facts and fact-checking her recording without saying anything negative about this recording because she has a technique that actually I think most of us here living on this planet still today would wish for. But her tempi are actually way below Czerny's um, indication if you consider Czerny's single beat. So 108, 88, 104, 88, 92 instead of 102. That's actually a very high number. 63 instead of 80, uh, 88, 93 instead of 104, that's the highest number she reaches percent in percentages. 88, 84, 94, also very high, and 50. So here are the percentages um, according, so compared to Czerny. 81%, 85, 85, 79, 81, 89%, 85, 81, 87, 76%. Now this is an interesting number here. And if you listen to this recording, I can also understand why people are impressed. She reaches here a number of 12.4 notes a second. That's, that's really high. If you remember the video I made a few weeks ago about the maximum number of notes per second that is documented to be the kind of maximum speed in history, 17th to 19th century, you will see, and remember I will link the video also here, that in, from the 17th century to 1860s, like that period, 1860, 1880, around end 19th century, 10 notes a second was actually to be 
considered to be the maximum speed. She's above that. And remember also at the end of that video, I gave you another source by Oscar Reif. He was a student of Tausig and he, had, he was involved in kind of, uh, well, scientific, I don't know, but experiments in what's the maximum number of notes people can actually hear without um, the notes forming groups of harmonies of clusters. And also he projected that to his students and himself and he measured the number of notes of people like Tausig, uh, Rubinstein and Bülow and he came to the surprising conclusion, or not so surprising conclusion, that 12 notes a second was actually the average top speed of a pianist. Now 12.4 notes, that seems to be a kind of magical barrier that's actually documented at the end of the 19th century. Remember also the other video in which I presented you some sources but also pointed toward, towards the uh, great pianist Joseph Wright, he has a beautiful YouTube channel in which he himself said that 12.4 notes a second in a C major scale is his maximum speed. Now, not to say that that's the maximum speed pianists can reach, certainly not in shorter runs for one octave, but 12.4 notes gives the impression to you and to some people who really believe single beat was the historical truth, truth that it's so fast that it reaches or matches the metronome number of Czerny and it doesn't. So you have to increase those speeds to 6, 15 and 16 notes a second, which again in the Opus 299 is not the most extreme examples. If you go to the daily exercises and other exercises only by Czerny, we reach 19 notes a second and there are, there are also etudes by Kalgren and Hertz. I mean, it's not an exception. So, yeah, the whole beat interpretation would obviously make this possible. Now, Vivian Harvey Slater, fourth generation Jenny student, so they had 150 years of practicing time not reaching the numbers of Czerny. And it has nothing to do with the Viennese piano, because if you listen carefully to what she does, the little trick that's in her play that allows her to reach speeds like 93 and 94, is very a smart way of using the sustaining pedal. Certainly in the runs and the bass, you will hear her using the pedal in a, in a smooth way, a very, very slight way, which enables her to release the notes very quickly. But that's for another video, it's not for this video. So now a lot of people say, well, these tempi of journey, they're just goals, targets, they're not aimed to really accomplish those incredible, incredible speeds. So the tempi that Vivian Harvey Slater reaches are enough. Well, if you see already, you can debunk that actually easily from the, from, the, from the numbers itself. If you see already 108, 104, 108, 108, 104, 104, he could have well said, well, as fast as possible. And this is contrary towards the whole tradition in the 19th century that's been described so many times that the metronome indications given by the authors, by the composers, are actually accurate tempo indications. There's no doubt about this. But anyway, Czerny writes in his preface and the Schule der Gelovigkeit, I will have the German text here on screen. And by the way, I had a French introduction on my computer as well. It's not an IMSLP. They have surprisingly little of the Opus 299 by Czerny, but anyway, there is a French edition as well in which Czerny gives the kind of same preface here, but here's the German one, which actually is also quoted from a book. I don't have the original uh, here, so that's something we have to look for. But anyway, I quote from, I quote a book that quotes the preface of Czerny. And he says, actually, let me translate that just not literally, but you can see the, the, the text on screen, that the, the goal of these etudes is, of course, to give you a kind of finger speed in these etudes that after you study them in the indicated tempi with keeping an eye on all the performance indications like forte, piano, articulation, not articulation, so on. So perform these pieces well in the indicated tempi and if you practice them daily, then you will see that your technique is being uh, increased. So there's no doubt what he meant with these tempo indications. You should be able to reach them. And now I connected to another source. 
And again, I said at the beginning, we will touch upon some elements that we will have to elaborate on in the future. But just to give you an overview and also put the work of Vivian Harvey Slater into perspective, there is a piano method by Ernst Power. Power, he was a German name. He lived from 1826 to 1905. And that was sent to me by one of my patrons, this piano method, which is really interesting to read. Power was a member actually of, of the mother of Ernst Power, which I didn't know, was a member of the Streicher piano builder family. Well, that's interesting. So the Streicher family, Nanette Streicher, she, they were very close to Beethoven. They were one of the leading families on music and instrument building in Vienna, in Beethoven's time. And more than that, Ernst Power studied also with Franz Xavier Mozart. So that's Mozart's son. So much closer than this, we cannot come, I think, to the Viennese period. So, and in his list of studies at the, studies at the end, I'll bring it on screen here, he says, among the studies, studies for beginners, we recommend Chinese Opus 299. So, if you would question, or if you would ask yourself, what is the group of students that are, that are aimed or is aimed with these etudes? Well, the answer is here. It's meant for beginners. So, yeah, I think that's cool to know that the Opus 299 is a bundle of etudes for beginners. But apparently, mysteriously, we lost the possibility or the, you know, the technique to play those etudes in these metronome numbers. And again, these are not the most extreme examples. But Vivian Harvey Slater, as many others, we will see that Lang Lang in his German um, Deutsche Grammophon recording is even slower than Harvey, than Vivian Harvey Slater. So that's an, you know, that's an, that's not a direct end proof or evidence for the whole beat theory. I'm not saying that. And you all know that I think playing speeds and technical limitations on reaching those metronome numbers for me is only secondary evidence. It's the result of not reading these tempo indications in the right way. So the result of that is that many of these metronome numbers become impossible. But it's not the first and prime way you should walk. The first way you should walk is reconstruct these pieces from the notation. Why did Czerny come up with 108? Why did Beethoven come up with the metronome numbers he gave for his Hamid Lavier Sonata or for his symphonies? Why? Why did they do that? It was based upon the notation. They understood the notation. And you have some small differences between Czerny and Moshe's. Those two are really the, 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 the I mean, those, those, are, those two composers and musicians have given the, the bunk of metronome numbers of those classical music, Haydn as well, Mozart as well. So they both have metronome numbers from Haydn and Mozart. And their work, their metronomization, it's not, of course, 100% the same, but they are the same range of each other. So they must have understood uh, the notation, which is still based on the tempo ordinario. We'll see, you know, give from Beethoven really a, a cool quote directly to the tempo ordinario and the metronome, but that's for later. So you have to start from within the notation to understand those metronome numbers. But playability is, of course, a secondary argument. And, if, and since we are musicians and music is meant to be played, to be performed, that's, of course, something we cannot escape. I think every study that deals with tempo indications of tempo reconstruction of the past should have a chapter on trying these tempi out. And if it's not possible, then probably the theory is wrong. That's my opinion. So the metronome numbers, notations, those are the first layer. Playing speeds is something that can help us understand what really was meant by those metronome numbers, but maybe not the first layer of evidence, quote unquote. So we will dive into this more. Also Ernst Bauer, his piano method, see what he has to write about other things. And I try to reconstruct a little bit the context around Czerny as well, because he was a really influential influential teacher, maybe not so much as a composer, but we will come back to some other works from him 
his hand as well because he deserves way more attention also as a composer today than actually is given to him so hope you enjoyed this segment which actually was just touching upon elements that we have to elaborate upon in the future more and if you do so give this video a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed to the channel appreciate you doing that also hit the bell icon because youtube is not sending you notifications anymore for the videos that we make and if you want to stay on top of everything we do that's the best way to guarantee that every video every live stream that we do will be in your inbox so thanks for doing that and hope to see you soon again